It's time for another episode of the Aberdeen series and we've got a lot to catch you up on. Today we have a huge match against Rangers in the league and another one against Hibernian who are two of the teams above us. But we've also made a couple of big transfers, a couple of huge free agents coming in. I mentioned them last episode, we actually managed to get them over the line and they've been awesome for us so I can't wait to introduce them to you. Before we start though, if you guys could keep showing your support and smashing the like button, I'd massively appreciate it and subscribe for more. Or drop a comment down below to help us in the algorithm too and I'll try and get back to as many as possible. I went back the other day and did a load of comments and got back to them. I've just got a lot on at the minute so I'm trying my best. I know someone did say they felt like I was saying it but didn't really appreciate the comments or something like that. I do appreciate every comment and I'll try and respond to them when I can but there's just a lot to get through sometimes so just bear with me if I don't respond straight away. But yes we've made two big signings. We've got two pretty big games today and also we've had two or so months pass, so it's all coming in twos, but I think we'll start off with our form since you last saw us and cover what's been going on. So you originally saw us play Celtic at the start of the season and then beat St. Mirren. From there, we drew to Motherwell, beat St. Johnston, then lost to Livingston. We progressed in the cup by beating Kilmarnock, but then we had two losses, one at home to Rangers and then one away loss to Ross County. We beat Hibs in the league away, which was a huge win for us. And then we went on a winning run and we've only just lost recently to Motherwell. So overall, we're actually doing very well and at least us sitting in the league in fifth place. Now we've been told to get a top half finish so right now we're kind of on track for that. Rangers and Hibs as you can see are two of the teams above us today and there's a good chance we do lose both of them so we'll see what happens there but the big thing is that in the Premier Sports Cup we're through to the semi-final against Hibs and I believe Celtic got knocked out last round by Hibs which means obviously the biggest contender for that trophy is now gone which is going to be an interesting one but yeah two pretty important games today. Rangers away then Hibs at home. Will we win either of them? I don't know, but our new signings might be able to help us out. So I'll first start off with the sale. I say a sale, it was actually a loan. We sent Christian Ramirez out on loan to Motherwell. I didn't want him around the club. No one wanted to buy him. We've loaned him out and it hasn't exactly gone too well for him since joining his new club. So we're not missing him too much. And I also loaned Matty Kennedy out to Dundee where he's playing his football. I just didn't see a place for him in the squad and I actually tried to get rid of a few other players on deadline day but it didn't quite work. So we have a bit of an inflated squad now. But we bought in three free transfers into the club and one of them was French international Hatim Ben Arthur. Probably former international we should call him at this point. He's 35, he's definitely degrading but he was one of those streets never forget kind of players in the Premier League. He's been to Bordeaux, Lille, Valladolid. He was still playing at a pretty high level playing seven times for Lille last year but we've picked him up on a free not costing too much on the wages and he's done all right for us one goal three assists he's played well and it's pretty much all I can ask in that inverted winger position he's here for a season or two we'll see how he gets on but I'm very happy to bring him in actually he was one that I was working on for a while I wasn't too sure if he'd actually join us but for 3.4 grand a week I'm very very happy with that to bolster our midfield options we bought in Dale Stevens on a free the English 33 year old has came from Burnley I think yes where he didn't play too much but before that he was a regular for Brighton in the Premier League only three or four years ago so he's still got some quality about him his physicals haven't completely disappeared either he can play a lot of roles he's very consistent he's on five grand a week is expecting to start most of his games and when he's played for us he's looked all right I wouldn't say he's been amazing but he's been fine and he just adds to that depth in midfield that we need again another one who's here for a year probably not too much longer than that but I'm happy to have him on board but we still bought in one more free transfer and it's another former French international we managed to get Yanga Ambiwa the centre back in on a free deal he wants six grand a week and to be a star player and to be fair to him when he was playing he was playing well enough to more than deserve that but he then got injured and he's out for five to eight weeks so he's going to be gone for quite a while it leaves us quite light at the back but those three together did make quite a nice set of signings. They've been playing the majority of games for us and I'm sure you're going to see them today. As side notes, our development team, our under 18s, are doing very well to the point, I don't know how we can see it in their league. Here we go. They're absolutely destroying their league. One ten, drawn one, which is a great sign that we've got some young prospects in there that are definitely worth taking a note of. You'll see here, they've all got some very high performances, all doing very well. So we're very happy with our under 18s and I'm sure a lot of them will make their way into the first 11. You'll also see the the staff situation is slowly getting better. We've managed to fix the coaching issue and filled in those slots. And overall, the club is starting to take shape the way that we want it to go. And I also, one final 
final thing before the games. I sold a transfer clause for Calvin Ramsey. Obviously, he went to Liverpool for a decent fee and it was a percentage of profit of his next sale from Liverpool. And I just didn't really see them either selling him or selling him for a crazy amount. They might go on to, but I was happy to take the one and a half million that they offered us right now, which will help us a lot in January in terms of getting some real high quality reinforcements in. So very, very excited for that. But obviously we need to be in a good position to attract those talents. So hopefully we can get some results today. So first and foremost, let's pick our team for this match against Rangers, which is away from home. It won't be easy. So far you've seen us play Celtic away and Rangers away, the two hardest matches we'll get. So I'm not expecting much here, to be honest, based on the way we've played. But let's pick our team anyway. It's going to be Jaden Richardson at the back, Anthony Stewart, Leon Scales and Mansoor with Ram Dhani, Ross McCorry and Clarkson in the midfield. Ben Arthur, Vinny and Miofsky. Vicente Basujan has been doing very well recently for us. And Miofsky has been brilliant as well, winning player of the month on two occasions. And also... Duke has been doing well for us. I said Duke last episode. I said Duke in the first one. I got told in the comments that it was meant to be Duke. So I called him Duke. And now everyone's saying I've been had on and he was actually meant to be called Duke. So I think someone's playing around with me. I'm going to call him Duke, I think, because it's how it's spelt. That's what I'm going to go for. Hopefully that is the right pronunciation. But when he plays Duke, he does do well. He's just been injured for a while. That's why Miofsky has taken over as a starting striker. I also think he probably has a bit more quality than Duke. Um, but Duke is a very capable backup amongst all three of those positions in the forward line, but particularly as our backup striker. So here we go. The game is underway. We are playing Rangers and hopefully... We'll get a good result here, but I'm not expecting too much. Like I say, they beat us away from home, I think 3-1. We were something like 3-0 down, then got a man sent off, but then actually looked really good and managed to score and nearly get back into the game. I and mean, it wasn't to be that one. And Morelos scores from a yard away, straight away here. Although he may have been offside because he did look very close to our goalkeeper. It just depends where Liam Scales was standing, whether he was playing him on or not. I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Goal review. And it is goal disallowed. That's perfect. A good start for us in some ways, I guess. Ideally, it never would have happened, but we'll take it. Let's have a look. The ball comes in. And yeah, there's three Rangers players there straddling that offside position, ready to tap it in. So we'll take that 15 minutes in and it's still 0-0. Oh my word, what's just happened? Sorry, I wasn't even concentrating when that came in, but... um. I've paused the game. Hopefully you saw that. If not, I mean, it will be there. Just rewind 10 seconds or so. Our centre-back, our, one of our best players, by the way, Anthony Stewart, just decides in the 17th minute of the game to run from centre-back to the halfway line just to crop someone for absolutely no reason. It's a terrible tackle. We're down to 10 men again against Rangers. This time, though, we're 17 minutes in and it's also in centre-back. Now, with Stewart out and Mbiwa were out injured, that's both of our two starting centre-backs gone. So it's now on loan Liam Scales playing and I guess it's going to have to be Jack Milne. We don't really have too much more depth in that area um, unless we drop Ross McCorry back, which might be the idea. He can play centre-back, supposedly. How well, I'm not too sure. Um, and then I think we'll just have to say bye to Ben after this game. Hopefully you'll get to see him on another occasion and bring Dale Stevens in. It, this isn't looking good. Awful start for us. And if they score straight away, oh, yeah, he's going to be out for three games as well, isn't he? I assume it works the same way in Scotland as it does in England, where you get a free game ban for a straight red. Oh, that's really going to screw us over. I know a lot of you as well will probably be thinking right now that I should go into defensive mode or ultra defensive. If you've watched any of my saves before, you know I don't touch it. I feel like if you do that, you just invite on pressure. And I'm sure there's a tactical way to play this game, but we're just going to set up the way we were set up just without someone on the right hand side. And hopefully we can make it through. And actually, 45 minutes in, there hasn't been that much of a threat to our goal. We had the offside goal, which was obviously offside. So that's whatever. And other than that, no real chances. And as I say that, just before the half's over, there is a highlight. But it is us on the ball. Who knows? Maybe we can steal a goal here. McCorry plays it forward to Clarkson, who can't win it. It falls to Ryan Kent, who's going to use his pace to burst past our defence. He goes right through the middle and his shot is pretty awful in the end. Goes wide and we make half time at 0-0. Really, our only aim now is just to make it out with this scoreline. I think that's what we're going to go for. Uh, just try and hold on to what we've got. I don't think we're going to get any chances in this game. So hopefully it'll just play out with no drama. We'll just see it go 0-0, no highlights. But that will never happen, will it? And here are Rangers bursting forward. It's a shot from Yilmaz just over the bar. We get lucky there 50 minutes in. But it's still 0-0 and that's all that matters to us. Corner for Rangers though. Ryan Kent plays it in into Morelos. It's headed away. And it's going to come back out to John Lundstrom on that right-hand side. He pulls it back. Oh, no. He's in, isn't he? Fashion Sakala's in. He scores. Not counted straight away. Is he offside again? Are we going to get another disallowed goal? 
be nice if so. We've had a man sent off. We've had a VAR decision in our favour. Can we have a second one? No, this one has been awarded. He was on side. Fair enough. Uh, it was always going to come at some point, wasn't it? Once we went down to 10 men. And Anthony Stewart is all to blame here. Very annoying from him. Um, but I think we'll just make a few changes now just to, you know, give other people a chance. Rest these legs for the next match. Phil Bardsley's also injured, by the way. I forgot to mention that. But Richardson is struggling out there. So I think I'll bring Ross McCory to right back. We will bring on Jack Milne, even though he's not ready for this kind of game. But, you know, it just is what it is at this stage. Hayden Coulson can come on as well. And Leighton Clarkson will take off for Connor Barron. I've decided to bring Duke on as well, just in case he can give us anything. I think we'll just whack them both up front together and hope something will happen there. I really doubt it will, but you know what? Tactical genius if it works, right? 63 minutes in, 1-0 to Rangers, a deserved lead for them, really. We've had no XG, barely any of the ball, as you would expect from a 10-men team against one of the best teams in the league, which we have to remember when we're playing this match. There is a highlight here, and for the first time, we're seeing us kick a ball, which is nice. But Ryan Jack heads it to Yilmaz, onto Ryan Kent. We're trying to push him back, but it's not really doing too much for us here. Lundstrom's been found in the middle. He takes a good touch. He volleys it. It comes off the post and we make it out. I actually think 1-0 will be a brilliant result at this stage. We're kind of just counting down the minutes until it hits 90 and then we'll focus all on that Hibs game in the hopes of getting something there. I think going forward, we'll probably have to do a defensive partnership of McCory and Scales, which isn't ideal at all, but I don't think Jack Milne's ready for this kind of game yet. Um, but there we go, full time. It was only 1-0. Who knows how that game might have played out without a red card. Maybe we could have actually had a chance of winning it because Rangers did not look up to their best there. That leaves us sitting in fifth with most other teams to play yet though. So I'm sure we're going to move out of that position sometime soon. But all we can do is focus on the next game against Hibs and hopefully win that one. So let me get there first and then we'll watch that match. Right, let's see if we can be any better in this game against Hibs. About a week has passed. Nothing really has happened to note. We've got a few more trialists in to maybe patch up that centre-back spot. I feel like we can get in free agents outside of a transfer window. I could be wrong, but it's how my mind's working right now. So I'm still actively looking for players. And even if they can't join now, they'll still be good for us later down the line. So I still have got my eyes open in the transfer market for what kind of improvements we can make in January. Because like I say, that one million and a half could go a long way in terms of improving this team. Leighton Clarkson, by the way, has been phenomenal all season. I didn't really give him too much of a note yet, but 13 games, two goals, five assists, two Young Player of the Month awards as well in the Scottish division is awesome. And we're going to go for Roos in goal. Richardson, McCory, Scales and Mansour, that's fine. Ramadani, Clarkson, Stevens. Uh, I feel like that's probably fine also. And then I'm thinking... Hatton Ben Arthur didn't really get to play last game. We'll give him another chance here. And if Miofsky doesn't score after 60, we'll bring on big man Duke to get the job done because he always seems to do it. Duke, sorry, not Duke, Duke. We're calling him Duke now. But here we go. Second game against Hibs, who are also doing very well. They are in third place in the league. So technically, outside of Rangers and Celtic, who are probably too far away from us right now, this is the closest club to us that we can actually kind of challenge and see if we can beat them properly because Rangers and Celtic, as much as we might get a one-off result against them over the course of a season, we're not going to be able to keep up with them. And I've been told by you guys that Celtic only gets stronger. Rangers, we might be able to overtake later on. And obviously we will try and overtake Celtic, but supposedly Celtic just go from strength to strength in football manager. But yeah, Hibs could be a team that we might potentially be able to, you know, overthrow in the league at some point here. And here's Hatton Benarfa on the right-hand side with the first highlight of the game. Finds Leighton Clarkson. Miofsky is in the middle. He is free if Clarkson can find him. He plays it in. Miofsky gets the shot off. But it's a good block from the defender there for Hibs. And 28 minutes in, we do look to be the dominant side at home here. Still a lot of empty seats, so clearly not a lot of Aberdeen fans are a massive fan of me just yet. But hopefully we'll warm their hearts as we start to win some games. But it does seem like more fans are turning up for us now, which is a good sign. So far in the game, possession is fairly equal just in Hibs' favour, but chances are all for us. We're doing a very good job of keeping them quiet. They've got Robson Carnu, who we almost had, by the way. He's a free agent at the start of the save, and uh, we tried to get him. He decided to go somewhere else. I couldn't remember where, but clearly it was Hibs. He would have been a nice player to have for sure. If anyone remembers his goal against Belgium in the Euros a couple years ago. What a turn that was. Uh, but anyway, here we are. Rocky on the ball for Hibs. This is a great, this is great for me because I'm really learning everything about the Scottish League as I play. Um, a lot of you guys were making fun of my pronunciations of a few clubs in the last episode. Um, and hopefully I'll get better at those too. But I can't even look. Robson Carnu has just gone and scored against us after I spoke about him. He's been played through. That Did that say only his second goal of the season? He just decided to turn up as we spoke about him. And it's a good ball through to him from the Genis. Robson Carnu gets in by the line. 
You could argue the keeper should get it there, but it is a very, very powerful strike. And after 53 minutes, we are now 1-0 down and we're going to have to look for something else here. But we'll see how this highlight plays out and then make some changes. Robson Carnu coming off that left-hand side yet again here, takes it past Jaden Richardson a bit too easily, has another shot. This time, Roos gets low, makes a save and puts it out for a corner. We'll try and survive this and then we'll make some changes. So let's see. We should be fine. I feel like we're pretty good at defending corners so far. Roos comes in. He claims it. Job done. Let's get some changes on the pitch. Miofsky hasn't performed well the two times he's been on camera so far this episode. He's off the Duke up front. Um, and other than that, I don't feel like anything is necessarily desperate. Ben Arthur and Basujan maybe not having the best of games. So I think I'm going to bring on Shaden Morris on that right hand side and leave it at that for now. And I'll just make the odd change here and there to try and influence the game. But we'll see if having Duke on can cause a problem. He seems to be a different threat than Miofsky when we use him. Duck, not Duke. Duck. But yeah, when we do use him, he's very good in terms of his pace and strength on the break. Uh, a lot of his goals come from balls over the top that he chases. And I'm hoping we get another one here, but 82 minutes in, nothing's really happening. We are the dominant team here. We should be winning this match. Persuasion can come off a of Johnny Hayes, although I don't really know what he's going to do for us. We're also going to bring on Hayden Colson, switch him for Mansoor, and finally we will take off Dale Stevens for Connor Barron, who's also a very good young player. We're trying to give him as much game time as possible since he came back from injury, but I do see him being a big part of our team going forward. He does look pretty decent, but yes, um, here we go. Only a few minutes left, and Hayden Colson's injured. We brought him on about 10 seconds ago, and he's already injured. Right, we're down to 10 men again. We've made all our subs. There's not much we can do here. I mean, we're trying to win anyway. We may as well just leave the gap and hope we can steal a goal. We're down to 10 men. We're in very attacking. If Hibs don't score, it'd be a bit embarrassing for him, I suppose. Oh, he's not trying to get sent off as well, is he? Connor Barron flying in with a challenge there. But maybe we can win this back and somehow counter. And we have actually got there. We are going forward with Morris, who finds Barron. He finds Duck on one of them overrunning balls that I spoke about, and he's hit it wide. He's done really well there. I told you, those balls over the top, he seems to love them. But that wasn't really good enough in terms of a finish. And there is one final highlight. We have got six minutes of added time, mind you. But if it could be in our favour, that would be great. We've been all over Hibs here, though, which we will take as a positive. I think on another day, we could have beat them. I think we still need to adjust the tactic a little bit over time. Find what really works for us. He's not just got himself sent off, has he? Jesus Christ, what's going on here? We're down to nine men now. That's two sending offs in two games. God's sake, man. Just to prove to you, I haven't got get stuck in on or anything like that. They're just deciding to go in for random horror tackles. Oh, God. And he's meant to be a key player for us as well, Johnny Hayes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right. We're, we're, down, we're down two players. There is no left-hand side. Come on, just blow your whistle, referee. We're done here, really. I think I will patch it in a second. Um, I've probably made a mistake not doing that sooner, actually, haven't I? Yeah, there we go. They've scored. That is, that is an error on my end. But you know what? Why are these people getting sent off like that? It's really, really bugging me. Two games in a row now that's happened. And yeah, I, I don't know what to say. I feel like we had a very good chance in both of these games. If we had our full squad with no injuries and also no stupid red cards, who knows what could have happened? There's probably a pretty good chance we could have came back and beat Hibs here with 11 men because we were the dominant team by far. XG, even with that chance, is still massively in our favour, but we're falling apart here a bit now. It's going to be two losses on camera, but I do assure you, we are playing quite well. I swear, if he's getting sent off as well, I'm going to be fuming. What's he doing? Right, it's, I think it's just a penalty. He's not reaching for a red card, but he's just flew in two-footed from behind. It's Honestly, what is it about the Scottish League that's just making all of my players dive in? I never usually see red cards. He's not sending them off, is he? He actually is. He actually bloody is. I can't believe this. I can't actually believe this. <laughs> We're down to eight men. Players sent off last game. Two players sent off this game and an injury. We're going to have a bare bone squad by the time we get into our next match. Oh my word. This is just awful. And it's going to be 3-0 from the penalty as well. What was the point in making that challenge? It's not like we've got loads of yellow cards. And it's been a really heated game. They just decided to throw in two horror tackles out of nowhere. It's 3-0 Hibs. It's an embarrassment. We're going to have no one to be able to play our next match. They're both going to be out for three games each as well, aren't they? Oh, for God's sake, man. This couldn't have gone much worse. This could not have gone much worse. But I suppose at least it's entertainment for you guys with these red cards. But I've never seen anything like this, man. <laughs> I really haven't. Three red cards in two games. All of them straight horror reds. That's a joke, right? We do find ourselves still in that fifth place position, which is good. But I doubt we'll be there for too much longer. 
Loads of people read cards. We need to figure things out, but that will all be for next episode. I don't know when I'll bring it back, probably after the January transfer window. If you have enjoyed the video with all those red cards, please smash the like button for us. It might cheer me up a little bit. Subscribe for more and drop a comment down below. But most of all, have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time. It's going to take me a little while to get over this one.